so guys uh, welcome to the session so in this session we are going to build data flows or pipelines with the microsoft azure data factory so let's go through the agenda first guys so firstly we will just start with the introduction to data factory and then just we will just go through the flow process of data factory and then we will be just uh, going we'll be seeing how to create pipelines using data factory and then we will be just going through one of the project and then we will see how to get started with this data factory let's get introduced to data factory guys so why do we need we we use this data factory guys so these days uh, the amount of data generated is really huge right so the data is coming from different sources so let's look at an example for better understanding guys so guys we are having multiple sources of social media and then we need to collect the time spent by each user on the platform per day right so now basically the extracted user details will be in uh, json format right so which means javascript object notation so if you want to perform some kind of analytics uh, i mean if you want to some perform some kind of analytics on all the user data period i mean spent on each social media every day then you will be collecting the customer's log files right so which will be in flat file right guys that is your text file so now the data which has been extracted is raw data right and cannot be used as it is so it needs to be cleansed uh, mapped and then you need to transform as per a requirement and then uh, you will be loaded to we will be loading to our data warehouse right so guys now the storage is connected to the external source so your external source can be any bi platform guys it can be tableau it can be power bi uh, so basically why we use this data factory is that guys uh, we can we just want to automate this all workflow and monitor and manage it on daily schedule so we just need to we can use data factory for automating all this process whatever uh, we just do it manually on some other tools we can just automate this all this flow in azure data factory uh also we can integrate with some bi tool and we can visualize our data and we can mo make more insights guys so guys uh, the complete process of extracting i mean the this is the complete process of extracting and transforming and loading the data into uh your data warehouse basically it is called your extract etl which is extract transform and load so guys basically your uh, source keeps on changing right so your source will not be consistent it generally i mean in real time when we talk about your source will be keeping keeping on changing so guys uh, this is now i mean let me give you an example better example so guys uh, as i said this is the regular process which will be uh, i mean your data will be fetching from some load, some source data so let's see i mean what is this data factory so guys uh, data factory is nothing but your uh, as i already said before it is a cloud based integration service guys and that orchestrates and automates the movement and transmission of your data so basically it stores the data with the help of data storage so and many other services so basically uh, it transforms the data with uh, the help of pipeline so so basically it stores the data with i mean with the help of your uh, data lake storage or any other storage so there are many kinds of storage services available in azure guys it can be data lake storage blob storage it can be sql it can be anything so guys uh, what is pipeline so what is pipeline exactly so we need to transform this data using pipelines right so what is this pipelines so basically your logical grouping of activities that together perform a task and then uh, basically it publishes to the organized data right so and then the third party applications like uh, power bi or your uh, tableau it can perform some analytics and visualizations right uh, i hope you all are clear with this what is data factory so you now let's move on to the working process of data factory guys so let me tell you something about input data so what is this input data is the data what we have is within our data store i mean so is it is it it will be, the data store will be with us or i mean it is our local store what can it be so guys uh, it can be anything so let me just give you a better example so that you will be understanding so let's say guys uh, we are collecting the data set from imdb website to perform some kind of visualization uh, based on the movie rating so basically this is a sample sample data set which i am showing here which can which we want to transform so guys this is very basic example which i am showing just for understanding purpose so 
in actual uh, so basically in actual the data i mean the source turns keeps on changing it is a regular process where your data is fetched continuously uh, which is really huge and we need to process this raw data okay so what we need to do so guys uh, through pipeline basically when when i talk about your pipeline it basically performs an operation of your data which could be anything just like your data movement or your data transmission now let's see let's see how it works so guys anything just like data movement or your data transmission uh, i mean anything just like your data movement or data transmission it basically what it does is guys so whatever data flow you will be i mean whatever automation process we basically just perform in data factory all that can be automated uh, in the pipelines itself you can just you can just uh, i mean you can just design the data flow of it and you can just design the uh, link services and you can just attach all those links in this pipelines and then so basically your pipeline is basically it consists a group of activities just like your data movement activity and your data transformation activity it can be anything now uh, as i have already said uh, now let's say as as we want i mean we want the list of movies to be reviewed on the basis of rating right which is, whether it is worse or average or good or no the transformation basically guys uh, is performed in the pipeline itself as i have already said so your data transformation is possible with the help of uh, usql or uh, some stored procedures or hive guys after this is done basically so you will be getting an output data set uh, and the output data will be uh, basically uh, contain the data that is in structure right so basically your output data will be structured as we have uh, performed some kind of uh, transformations over it so it is structured data right so guys uh, now you will be, as i have said you will be getting an output uh, i mean so basically this because it is already i mean now so basically guys now here is the list of movies which i will be showing see uh, which are transformed based on the rating which after after applying the transformations you can just see based on the rating uh, the user user rating we have given got a i mean review i mean we have changed the data got changed over here which is average which is uh, worse which is good so this is a basic transformation this, this is not only the transformation which i'm referring to uh, for your understanding purpose i'm just showing this thing so guys uh, let's move to the next slide so next comes link services so guys uh, link services are something which we just attach between your source and destination store guys for defining your link i mean your link service can be anything as shown here so your link service can be uh, for your data store i mean for your mysql or for data lake or for your azure sql so basically it contains the information which we need to collect i mean so basically which we need to collect to the external sources right so now let's move to the further slide uh, so guys basically we will be just connecting to your third party tools uh, at the end after getting your after this etl process we will just load this data we will just integrate it with some third party bi tool or bi application just like power bi or tableau and then our visualization i mean we can just perform some we will get some insights on it so it is similar to the concept of sql server guys where we need to mention the source and destination okay so let me show you a better example so here see uh, for this uh, let's say your uh, sql is your uh, source database so your de destination is your blob storage so guys for sql we need to create the link service and for destination also we will be creating the link services and then we will be attaching them so then then we can just i mean uh, we can just uh, in the pipelines we can just de declare the transformation whatever we know we want to do so this is how link services work guys so and then comes the optional gateway so your optional gateway is nothing but uh, if you want to connect to your on premises system then you need to install your self hosted integration system right so that you can connect to your azure cloud and uh, you can just perform some integration i mean whatever you want to do and then finally we will be just connecting to our bi2 uh, so what as i already said we will be create we will be performing some kind of data analysis and your visualizations we can perform all the insights in the bi2 it can be tableau it can be power bi it can be uh, any bi application all right guys uh, now let's see uh, the overview now we will be collecting this data and store it uh, on the i mean we will be storing it on the location 
now let's see so we, let's say we are storing the data in the data warehouse now we want to transform this data i mean through the pipeline as the data is coming from uh, different sources which is raw data so we need a no sql data store with a uh, huge amount of storage guys for this azure provides a uh, data lake storage so i hope you all are clear with the working process of data factory now let's see uh, how do we create pipelines using data factory all right guys so creating a pipeline basically is uh, listed as one of the uh, i mean steps in performing your etl solution guys now we have a school database let's say uh, i mean we are trying to extract some data from the database we will be extracting and if something has to be processed then it will be processed right then it will be stored in somewhere i mean wherever we want now let's see the steps for uh, i mean so basically guys as we are seeing in this on the screen so your we have your uh, database i mean sql database and we are trying to extract some data from the database so we are just so we will be extracting and something has to be processed then it will be processed and then stored in the data lake so these are just some sample databases guys it can be anything it can be happened between uh, your blob storage to sql or sql to blob storage or your blob to data lake or data lake to blob it can be anything your data source can be anything there is no specific restriction that your source should be something or your destination should be something specific it can be anything all right so these are the steps for creating your uh, pipeline using data factory the first thing we will be doing is we will be just creating your link service for your sql server database or whatever i mean i have taken my in my case i have taken the example as sql to data lake so that's why i'm just showing the steps for creating the link services i mean etl pro i mean just steps for creating the etl process so we will be creating the link service for sql server database as the source database and then we will be creating link service for the target database which is in our case it is azure data lake store and then we will be creating the data set for the data extraction uh, this one we will be just doing an author and monitor tab guys which is which after, once you will be creating the data factory you will be uh, I, I mean you will be you can just access that uh, author and monitor tab there you can just go to the visual i mean you can just go to the author and monitor and there you will be having this all these options for creating the linked services and creating the data set for your data extraction process and then you can just create a data set for your data saving and then we can just create a pipeline guys and then we can add some copy activity or any raw activity and then guys at finally so the main advantage of this data factory we can schedule this pipeline just by adding trigger uh so basically guys you can just schedule this your i mean let's say i mean whatever transformation you have you can just schedule that on some specific basis we can transform them on weekly basis we can transform that on monthly basis we can transform that on day to day basis you can just transform it whatever and however in whatever way you want you can just transform in that way all right so guys now let's let me just show you one project uh, where we will we are going to perform today so guys uh, in now today i'm just going to demonstrate you a project where we will be identifying the videos in the selected channel from youtube that is getting maximum traffic so let me explain this problem statement to you guys to you guys so basically guys uh, we are having uh, so basically we are having a youtube channel so in the youtube channel there are various channels right so let's say there is a company so the company wants to promote its advertisements so in order to promote its advertisements so it wants to uh promote the ad its advertisement on the channel which is getting the utmost traffic okay so we, how does the channel knows that uh, the channel specific channel is getting the utmost traffic so guys for knowing that that uh, i mean that company needs to put a developer who is an azure data factory specialist where he will be automating the uh, list of i mean list of channels which is getting uh the more i mean which are which are getting the utmost traffic at specific time so he can just put a trigger for every 5 minutes so for every 5 minutes the traffic is let's say the traffic is loading so every 5 minutes the the list gets changed and based on the list this company can promote its advertisements so this is the project we are going to do guys so in our project we are just considering the two data sets which will be where the data set one will be our first interval and uh, let me just show you the data sets so these are the data sets which we are going to perform let me just open this data, data sets for you guys so these are the two data sets guys so where we are having uh, 
video id video title views likes uh, dislikes comments and your duration in minutes but in real time you will be getting in, in different format so for your understanding purpose we are just uh, creating this project as a sample project so this can be these all things can be uh, the, these are all the some of the basic data which we are getting from the channels so now let's without waiting wasting any time then let's import this to our sql database so for creating this let me just move to my azure portal all right guys uh, now first of all let me create a sql server so what i'm going to do here is guys so i'll be just creating my so first of all we'll be just uh, creating an sql server and then we will be just creating some other different data store which will be let's let's create data lake and then we will be just creating pipelines uh, just to load i mean make some kind of uh, things i mean we can just transform the data and then we will be just uh, we will be just building the i mean to copy the all the data i mean we will be just performing a basic basic uh, query we will be just performing on that where we will be just uh, let me show you so first of all let me create a sql server guys So guys, uh, if you have a resource group, it's fine. Or else you can just create a new resource group. First of all, let me create a resource group as workshop. So I'll just give my server name as YouTube source. So I'll just give my admin details, which will be IntelliPad, and then I'll just give it as. All right, guys. Let's create this server. So the deployment is taking some time guys uh, let's wait for the process so meanwhile let me just open my sql server management studio yeah it's already open so guys you can also connect to this sql server instance using your azure inbuilt sql i mean that also you can use or else you can use the sql server management studio just to connect your sql server database or anything else all right guys the deployment is completed now let's just go to the resource so basically your azure sql so microsoft uh, i mean now let's go uh, ahead and just create the database for this so guys basically your azure sql database is a managed cloud database which is provided uh, as a part of microsoft azure so let me just create the database here so my database name will be let's say sql db all right so I just don't want it to be an elastic pool. Uh, you can also create an elastic pool or a managed instance, guys. So basically, there are different concepts. So basically, when we talk about uh, elastic pool, uh, so your elastic pool is like something, nothing but a collection of your databases with uh, some shared set of resources. Uh, I mean, which are which are managed using your SQL Server data, database server, guys. So basically, what is the benefit of using an uh, elastic pool in Azure is that so using with this you can just create a single database which can be moved in and out of an elastic pool which can use which gives us fle flexibility actually so but we don't want that we just we can just create a normal sql database for this purpose because uh, cost also va varies for every database whatever we are creating so now i'll be just creating my sql database so you can just see the estimated cost per month whatever is shown over here so let's create this thing so in azure sometimes the deployment takes uh, much more time guys uh, let's get it deployed meanwhile let me just open the sql server and connect it to the connect it to my ssms uh, which is on my local machine Let's go to the SQL servers. There you can just find the SQL server. So YouTube source is my server which I have created now. So all right, guys. Uh, let me just check the service settings over here. So this is my server name guys using this server name we can connect it anywhere wherever we want so i just wanted to connect on my 
uh, SSMS portal. So here I'll be just connecting to this guys. Uh, so I just connect to my database engine. So here I'll just paste my server name. So guys, here I'll be just doing it with SQL Server authentication. So my the login login credentials will be the one which you have created it over while creating the SQL Server. So guys, I have created my login name as IntelliPad, right? So that's what I'm just giving it over here. So guys, I need to sign in uh, with my Azure account for getting this client IP address. So basically our client IP address is not having the access to the server. So we need to just uh, sign in with our Azure account and then we need we need to create a firewall rule for that enabling it. So let me log into my Azure account. Yeah, so let me add my client address. So guys for importing or exporting uh, an Azure SQL database with basically I mean without allowing Azure, I mean for without allowing Azure services to access the server you can just create you can also create an Azure virtual machine and then you can just connect to that and then you can install SQL package and then you can just create a firewall rule uh, to allow that VM access to the database and then you can export a database using SQL package. So but here what we are doing is that we are just uh, importing. I mean we have just created a server uh, on Azure and then we are just whatever data we are having. We are just importing to our SQL. I mean to our uh, Azure SQL database. So let me. So let me expand the database over here. So this is my database which I have created on my SQL, Azure SQL server. So guys, let me open SQL import and export services. Uh, yeah. So with using this thing, I can import my import my. So guys, my source data is whatever I'm giving is Excel data, right? So let let's put it in Excel data. So I'm using 2016 version. So let me put it this thing. So let me give the source form. I mean path over here. All right guys now destination is nothing but my SQL Azure SQL server, right? So I will just put it as my OLEDB driver for SQL server. Or not this one. We have to give it as so I'll be just giving my server and server name over here over here and then I'll be just giving my uh, server. I mean details of credentials. So let me log in over here. Yeah, now let's uh, choose this here. Yeah. You can choose this over here. So this is my database which I have created on my server, right? So now I'll be just uh, going forward. So what I'm doing over here is guys. I'm just copying the data from uh, all of the tables to the server. So let me edit the mappings. So I just want okay. It's already if you want to change the data type or anything you can just change it over here guys. So here my uh, data is and this uh, so video ID should, I want it in my integer type I don't want it in my flow because all my all the my integer so I'll just put it into int and then my views are also integer type if views cannot be in decimals right so I just want to do it in integer format and you'll I mean I just want everything to be integer instead of flow so I'll just change this thing also you can alter these data types over using query also we can do it manually also in this way all right guys uh, now let me just go on next. Okay, I think everything is fine. Yeah, good. This should import successfully. Let's see. Yes, guys, we are good to go. So our process is very successfully done over here. So let me just uh, query this data. So it's taking good time. So okay. Meanwhile, let's uh, just create our data factory and also data. I mean, final 
so I'll, I'll for my target database i'll just create a data lake guys so how do we create this data lake in this uh, azure so basically for creating data lake or blob storage you will you won't be having a specific option so you need to go to storage accounts guys so let's go to the storage accounts uh all right so let me just add over add a storage account so it's basically your azure data lake when you talk about your azure data lake it includes the capabilities uh, which are required to make it easy for developers or your data scientists or analyze and lists to store the data of any size or shape so we are just creating the data uh, lake over here so let me just open so i'm just choosing the pay as you go subscription now already we have created the resource group i'm just creating i mean i'm selecting the workshop as my resource group and then i'm just giving my name for my storage name which is data lake so let me just give it as a uh, target database so okay it's already taken let's give let's give another name so guys uh, basically we are using database data lake version 2 so which is the latest version so we are putting a replication mode as read access geo read and storage uh, that's fine uh, access tier we, we are choosing it as pod so let me just create all right guys it it work let's create this so guys you you all might have a uh, query in your mind what is the difference between the azure data lake uh, one and azure, what is this gen one and gen two so guys basically uh, here for azure data lake uh, generation 1 is a file system storage in which your data is distributed in blocks in hierarchy file system guys so your azure data lake uh, generation 2 comes i mean contains both file system storage for performance and security guys and your object uh, storage for scalability so azure data lake analytics is also support which is which is not available right now because it is expired right now so i mean we, now some of the new features are updated in this thing let me just go to this thing so let me choose this uh for shop as my resource group let me i think it's some mistake which we have done which we have not checked uh so let me create it as target el yeah fine so version 2 is this one and this is version 1 and this is blob storage uh, we can just create these three services and data lake yeah we are good to go all right guys now let me just uh, check this database okay we can just check it over there now let me just create the data factory now so we are creating a job where uh, we can just automate all this process to be happen guys so basically your data uh, factory uh, provides your single hybrid data integration service guys for all skill level so basically you can use the visual interface or i mean you can just write your own code uh, i mean in any language to build the pipelines as well you can just build the pipelines manually as well guys you can just put your choice of processing services into your managed data pipelines or you can insert custom code as the processing step in your any any of the pipeline so let me just create the one data factory first so edf project sorry so let me just choose my resource group uh, it let me choose it as workshop fine now i don't want to enable git so this is already choose so i don't want uh, just let me just give it as some different name all right so guys uh, if you i mean what is this enable git option guys so basically to provide uh, a better authoring experience so basically azure data factory allows you to configure a git repository with uh, either azure repository or your github so basically git is a version control system guys that allows you for easier change of uh, tracking and uh, collaboration but i don't want to enable git for this so let me just create this thing
all right guys it got deployed let me go to the resource so as i have already said in the presentation when i am explaining about data factory so whenever you want to create any link services or pipelines you will be just going to this author and monitor guys so in this tab we uh, there is let me show you yes guys uh, it's open so let me just show you so guys we can just uh, go to this manage tab and then we can just create linked services guys so you can also directly uh, create all the process at one go but this is more i mean you are having uh, this specific thing where you can just create linked services where you can create integration runtimes you can just get, you can just do some git configuration over here and then you can just define triggers and whatever you want so guys first of all let me just create uh, the link services for this so first of all i'll be creating a link service for my source database which is my azure sql right so my server name is uh, let me check it SQL DB. Let me choose as this thing, and then let me just as uh, Intel Intel at the rate one two three. Let me test the connection. Okay. Let me just. Uh, Or let me do it over here. So my task name is that uh, transform the channel list. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me just output list. YouTube channel list. So guys, here you can just uh, run it once, or you can just run regularly on schedule. You can just trigger it uh, every. I mean, you can do it hardly minute, or you can just do it every one minute, or you can just do it every hour, whatever you want. I just right now I'm just uh, I'm not scheduling it. I'm just running it once. Uh, let me just create this. So let me just choose my Azure Boot Data. Right, let's do one thing. Let's do it with service principal ID. Uh, so I'll be just creating. Uh, I'll be just going to my app registrations. I just create a new app over here, uh, which will be my Azure SQL. So I'll just go to certificates and secrets, guys. Uh, so here I'll just uh, upload a new client secret, which will generate my principal key. So let me just put it as secret. Add this thing. So this is my uh, application. You have to copy this thing, which is your key. So let me just put it in my notepad for safe side. So. Click on overview. You can just go. You can get the principal ID, which will be your application ID. So this is my application ID, right? Uh, so first of all, let me copy this thing here. Service principal ID and the principal key is noted over here, right? Uh, and also we have to give the firewall access in Azure SQL, right? Uh, let me just do that as well. So here I'll be adding a role or assignment guys. So here I'll be just uh, putting as the owner. Let me just put this. Let me check this application. I mean, let me confirm this app registration name. So whether it is SQL or anything else, let me just uh, go through the application. Uh, 
okay we have to create for azure sql so let me just go to that uh, sql server so under the access control i'll be just uh, giving the access for mine So once we are done with this, let me just uh, text this connection. Yeah, is it dependent on this? Oh, let's see what is the error we are getting. YouTube source database database. Uh, check the links on configuration and make the SQL Server database firewall across the integration runtime. Okay, let's check the firewall. So we are done with the principal key and then we are done with the okay, let me just we'll check the database once. Okay. So this is a uh, source database, right? Uh, so let me just check the access for this thing as well. Okay, we need to set that in that only it's set already. Maybe it's not working still. Okay. successful let's create this all right guys now link service for azure sql database is successful now let's uh, create let's go for the step so while loading the i mean uh, source data to just to our target data we just need to query uh, we are using including the query as well so we are applying i mean some query based on this so we are just we want to change i mean we just want to the output where the views and like i mean uh, here in our data set we are just considering the views and likes to be uh, i mean where we want the traffic so in order to just uh, find the channels which has more traffic so i am just querying over here where so let me just do it select a video id so first of all, let me just see the schema as well So you also can preview the data over here guys see so here is the preview of the data so now let me use the query for this so it would be something like uh, select video id title uh, views like uh, we'll be selecting the views uh, i mean video id views and let we let's say we want this only video id and video title only so Okay, let's put the views also. So what is our table name over here? Worksheet, right? So let me put the field as 72. Here let me put some random field. All right, guys, we got the data to that. Uh, now let's uh choose the destination data store now my destination data store will be uh let me just create a link service for my data lake store which i have created so my data lake store over here is storage let me it's target dl right uh so let's choose the data lake store is gen 2 over here 
and then click on continue uh, now let's choose the integration service one so i'll be choosing my azure subscription which is pay as you go now my storage account name is target data lake uh, so i'll just choose this so i can test the connection over here so let me create this link service all right so let's click on next so guys uh, for my old folder path uh, you can choose it let me just go to my storage explorer preview so under the containers i'll just create one container let me create a block container over here output so guys as i've already said what is the difference between uh, gen 1 and gen 2 so basically gen 1 is a file system storage which your data is distributed in blocks in hierarchical file system and your gen 2 is uh, which contain both file system storage to performance and security and your object storage for your scalability right so let me just choose this okay so i'll be just uh, choosing the output yeah so i'll be choosing this output and then my file name will be final so i won't define this maximum current current connection blocks let it let it you can leave it blank click on next so guys uh, my file will be coming in text format i just want it in text format and my column delimiter will be comma you can change it as well uh, and then row delimiter will get auto detected which is slash n which is ending of the line and then i just uh, click on next let me just do it all right guys you're gonna you can also monitor this thing so it's still in progress guys it's taking some time let's see so we have applied manual trigger over here uh, you can also as i have already said we can schedule it uh, minute wise i mean or else you can just do it hourly wise whatever you want i can do it in any way guys uh, let's just open this thing it's still in progress let's get let's wait for getting it succeeded so guys uh, basically you know uh, let me just show you so when we talk about this uh, triggers guys uh, basically data, data factory supports three types of triggers which is uh, scheduled trigger which is a trigger that uh, invokes a pipeline on your wall clockwise schedule and another thing is tumbling window trigger which is a trigger that uh, operates on your periodic intervals while also retaining in which is in retaining state guys so event based trigger when we talk about that a trigger that is uh, responded to an event so these are the three types of triggers which are supported and on major data factories i think it is it might be completed let's just refresh this and let's see so we have already defined created this link services we can directly choose it over here so my source data is azure sql database i just click on next and then I need to apply the query again. So also guys, uh, let me show you one more thing. So we can just, uh, or else let me wait. Okay. So let me query this thing. First of all, before querying on this, we will just try to query over here. Let's do slow. Let's uh, choose from everything. So let's start from, Let me validate this first. Okay. Uh, okay, guys, this is the output which we are getting. So it should work actually. So the query is working. That's where we got the output. So we have we have given some hundred channels and we are getting one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the channels which are getting the utmost traffic as per my constraint, which I have set to my uh, data set. So just click on next yeah so i'll be choosing my data lake storage as my destination data store which we have already defined which is the link service so let me choose this thing output here with this file name you can just test this connection all right guys it got validated uh, now let's finish this thing now let me just uh, Let's move ahead to storage accounts and check whether that they got updated or not. So this is my target database and 
I think it should be under process still. So let me open it in Storage Explorer preview mode. Still getting loaded, I think. Yeah, it's successful. All right, guys. Meanwhile, if you have any, uh, so this is in this way, we can just uh, build these things and we can just do all these things, whatever we want. We can just build pipelines and we can just create data flows all over here, guys. So basically, here in this panel, we will be creating the data flows and here we, will be, we have created the YouTube channel, I mean, source pipeline, and then we have created for our destination pipeline. So in this way, we will be just creating it. Uh, so guys, uh, if you have any technical queries, you can just raise under questions and also, I'm just handing over to Mr. Jit. Jit, you can continue. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Ashok. Okay, yeah. so I'll just take it forward from here. So if you can just yeah. uh, just uh, let me uh, share the screen here. If you can just enable so that for me. Yeah, sure, sure. So hi, guys. My name is Jit. So I'll be helping you out to just uh, give you the information about this program that we have. Okay all right so as you can see this is our website uh ashok you're there is it yes i'm there visible? is everything fine yes the audio it's, and, visible, uh, it's visible okay yeah it's visible so, great great so guys as you can see here so this is our website so this is where if you visit in delipad so if you just come to the search bar if you type azure over here i'll just fast forward here so i've already opened the pages so this is what the results will be shown to you. Okay, so if you just scroll down, you'll find Azure Data Factory Training for DP200 and DP201. This is the program where in whatever things Ashok has explained right now, so that will be covered in this program itself. Everything related to the Azure Data Factory Console or related to the data engineering module, which is there for DP201. So just to give you information about what DP200-201 is, it's nothing but the global certifications where in Azure Data Factory is a part of it. Okay, and it also has other components involved where it, which includes Azure SQL. Okay, you have uh, Azure Synapse Analytics. Okay, you have Azure Cosmos DB, you have Blob Databricks. Okay, Stream Analytics, such kind of things. So this is about, or this is the part where in the complete course is being covered so yeah now just to give you a basics of it so here you can see the key features mentioned so 24 hours of intercalate training which means that 24 hours is the least time that it takes to complete this entire program here so we have batches on weekends which is on saturday and sunday 8 to 11 pm i'll definitely get there and uh, we are conducting live webinar sessions just like you have attended this webinar right now so i've seen it was live it was interactive Okay, so it's going to be the same way itself and uh, it's going to be conducted on every weekend 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, so that's on Saturdays and Sundays. In fact, we have a batch starting tomorrow itself. It's a fresh batch. Okay, now coming to the next point. So which is a 48 hours of project work. So you have seen Ashok has everything at the Azure console itself. Okay, including with the PPTs and everything. So he's explained on the console. So that's what we are going to do here. We're going to explain you everything with the BBTs, including the Azure console. So you get a practical understanding of it. So you get to know how it feels like to work with this technology itself. Okay, now moving on to the next part, which is get certified in job assistance. So this means that we are going to give you a certification. It's going to be a course completion certification from Microsoft, which are going to get it from IntelliPad itself. Once you're done with this course, we are going to conduct a small quiz. You need to score a minimum of 60% over there, and you're going to get the course completion certification by Microsoft itself. At the same time, this course is also designed for you to clear the DP200, which is for implementing an Azure data solution, and DP201, which is for designing an Azure data solution. So these two certifications. And uh, coming to the next point is a flexible schedule, which means that it's an online classroom. So we are well aware of the fact that you know all our learners are from different places. Okay, so most of them are from different countries. So even from India, they're from different places. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what happens here is that in case if you have any doubts or queries, which you might have definitely apart from your classroom sessions. So you can raise a query if you want some technical assistance. If you want some technical help, we're going to sort it out for you whenever you want. 
So it's not bound to Saturdays and Sundays all the time. If you have a query, even if it's in the middle of the night or if it's early in the morning, you can just give us a call and it will be resolved. Okay, now coming to the next point, the lifetime free upgrade. So lifetime free upgrade means that IntelliPad is the only institute currently who are providing with a lifetime free upgrade feature, which means that whatever course you register for here, you will be enrolled with us throughout your entire life. So this means your subscription is going to never expire. Okay, you can attend as many batches as you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. It comes the same with the materials too. So materials includes your step-by-step -step videos, PDFs, PPTs, ebooks, such kind of materials will be providing you, which will always be there, including the projects too. Plus the assistance is always there. Okay, so this is something that you get only at IntelliPad, which secures your career throughout your entire life, you can say. Okay, and whatever updates are being introduced with Microsoft, you know that's a thing that Microsoft keeps doing. Previously, the certification was AZ70776. It got upgraded to DP200201. And of course, we are expecting another update. So in case of these updates, keep you know they're keeping, uh, they'll be following up. You'll be getting free updates from us once you're registered without any charges. Now coming to the next point, that's a 24-7 lifetime support. So this means I've already explained you about it. So can get help or assistance anytime you want. Okay. And if you miss out any batch or something, okay, so that will also be resolved. So we'll be giving you the webinar recordings within 24 hours, first of all. And second of all, if you want to attend the same session again, you can attend it multiple number of times, as many times as you want. There are no restrictions on that. Okay, so we'll put you on a parallel batch that's going to start with the same topic or which is running probably on the same topic on the upcoming weekend. So we'll just put you on the fresh batch or in the mid, whenever you want, whichever topic you want to get addressed. Okay, now coming down to the course content. So course content we are already well aware of. So you must have seen the Microsoft's website. And just to give you a basic idea of it, I'm not going to just read out a lot because it's already a bit late. We are here at it's around, almost around 11 for our Indian people who are there. But I'm going to give you an overview. So you can see this is a course content, but just to give you a basics of it, even if you are not having any understanding of Azure platform, okay, if you want to learn it, you can still learn it from scratch because we'll be teaching you from scratch. We'll teach you from what is Azure. Okay, the fundamentals of Azure first, and we'll cover the basic concepts. After that, we'll be covering these concepts that you can see here for Data Factory, Databricks, you know, Stream Analytics, relational data stores, and all such kind of components are mentioned here. Okay, so overview, I've already discussed about it. Okay, now coming to the projects. So you've seen what Ashok has worked on in this webinar itself. That was a project. So this same kind of project will be giving you a, as a part of the journey of the course itself. So you can work on as many projects as you want. And just like this, we'll be helping you with a real-time implementation of the projects. Okay, this is going to be followed by hands-on quizzes, webinars, and seminars we've been conducting. We'll, we'll keep on doing that throughout the entire tenure of this program. Okay, so come to certification, you can see it's mentioned here, Azure certification, which is designed for clearing these two certifications. Now, one question that I get from a lot of my clients here personally, and a lot of people have been questioning me about the fact that why is the course named Azure Data Factory if it's for data engineering completely, okay? So as for the name purpose, it's uh, because this module is more popular in the name of Azure Data Factory, but it covers the complete concepts and we are well aware of the fact that, you know, DP200 and 201, wherein Azure Data Factory is just around probably 40 to 50% of it. And you have a lot of things associated with DP200 and 201, right? So we're going to cover everything completely starting from scratch, all right? So at the end of the training, we'll also be helping you out with, with the job opportunities. So you must have seen that if you Google Azure Data Factory training, so you'll just end up at IntelliPets website itself. That's because it's only us who are providing the training currently in this entire country, either look at online or offline, with an accreditation of Microsoft, of course. And uh, if you guys are interested in looking for a job change, if you're coming from the same background, if you're coming from a SQL background or in BI or ETL background you're coming from, perhaps big data engineering you're coming from, you can definitely do this course. Even if you're not coming from these backgrounds, but you have an ambition to be a data engineer in Azure, then also you can do this course. You don't have to worry about prerequisites at all because we'll be covering everything from scratch for you. Just like I keep on repeating this word just to make it clear to you. So don't have to worry about anything. And we'll help you look for a job change too. If you want to switch to this profile completely, we will be the best institute who can help you out. Building your CV up completely, we will do that, including you know adding the projects you've worked on. That also will be taken care of by our people itself. Okay, We have a team here. We have our own job portal in IntelliPad as well. 
so it's jobs.intellipad.com you can check that out later on okay now coming to the course fees so course fees you can see there are two slabs that we have here so one is a self-paced and the other one is the online classroom training okay so self-paced you can see it's mentioned 18,012 rupees and the online classroom is 30,039 so both of the prices come with an 18 percent added gst it's as per government norm so you have to charge that amount so for this one for the self page it will be somewhere around 22,000 rupees 21 to 22,000 rupees and for the online it's going to be 30,000 plus an 18 percent gst which is roughly around 5,000 you can say an additional of so 35,000 rupees you can expect the price to be okay so what happens is that the online classroom includes the self pace already and self pace is just a package of the materials the you know the previous loaded videos the projects and everything including the course completion certification so online classroom what you get is that you get a live session with the instructor plus those materials plus you get so you can see here it's one-on-one -on -one doubt clearing sessions you'll get and you can attend as many batches as you want so it's definitely beneficial for you to go for the online itself and we do run some discounts currently it's month and we are running on good discounts and we can give you attractive offers on this okay for our upcoming batches if you are registering at your earliest perhaps you can get an opportunity to get this course at a minimal cost of around 24 25000 rupees perhaps lesser okay so that will be you know communicated to you by our course advisors once you reach us out we'll be sharing you the details okay now coming to the timings here so you can see there are two timings that we have which is on saturday and sunday 8 pm to 11 pm so that's only one time i'm sorry about that so that's on saturday and sunday 8 to 11 pm so these are night sessions that we are providing and uh, this 26 july you can see which is a fresh batch which is tomorrow it's going to start in case you are starting off for tomorrow's batch you can get an exclusive blast of an offer on this okay so which i'll communicate again on a later period of time i'll be sharing you my details right away you can give me a call directly and these are the consecutive batches are going to start after this so you have one on 1st august you have one on 8th on 23rd and consecutively it's going to start we'll be updating the batch the details on the website itself okay so for registering what you need to do is that you need to click on the enroll now button in case if you want a good discount and you are supposed to give me a call you can just give me a call i'll be sharing you my contact details for those who are on the webinar right now they can just note down my contact number which is 9 seven four one zero eight seven one two eight so i'll be repeating it again there is nine seven four one zero eight seven one two eight so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to just mention my number over this chat panel here so that everyone can uh, vis uh, everyone can check this out so it is nine seven four one zero eight seven one two eight yeah so that's my number and uh, my name is jeet okay so it was an amazing experience right now and uh, i'd be glad to receive your phone calls you can you guys can call me anytime you want i'm always available okay so either if you guys are from a different country if it's difficult to reach out over the call itself you can drop me a message on whatsapp perhaps you can call me directly over whatsapp itself and uh, yeah that's pretty much about it and uh, i'll be seeing you guys probably i'll be hearing you guys out soon and uh, yeah that's it okay if you guys need anything you can call our helpline numbers anytime you want you have intellipads details you know it's all in the website you have the contact numbers and everything mentioned in the website so we have 24 7 helpline numbers you can see here is a number mentioned this is for our us customers okay so you guys can call anytime and sort out any queries if you have even a discussion to make if you want to know basics about this program any other course related to azure so we have all the courses related to azure right now it's not just data factory alone plus we have other courses that is being provided only by intellipad you can say it's for azure devops you have azure administration architect development so in name it we are providing all these courses including Ajit, for sorry bi for big data data science you name it yeah, yeah. sorry to interrupt you uh, there are some questions we can yeah, just yeah. answer if there yeah uh, someone is asking is there a certificate going to be there for the workshop as mentioned in the webinar confirmation mail uh, asked by Sajan. you can answer this question Hello. okay so yeah certification definitely is going to be organized by the team here itself so the webinar certification currently i am not exactly aware of that but i guess we are being provided because if it's a workshop so certifications primarily are available only for workshops 
okay i am not sure about this current webinar right now about certification if it's going to be issued or not but uh, we have conducted workshops even few days back we have conducted a work on aws therein we have issued a certification as well okay so for this ashok if you can confirm with the, the rest of the senior members from the operations team about the certification part okay i'm not pretty sure about it but uh, uh, if you can just check on that i guess there is no cert involved on this right it was there in the email confirmation from dilip yeah if you got an email regarding the certificate then it will be there don't worry about that and also if you yeah, uh, are enrolled there if it's mentioned then of course yeah if you are enrolled for the course yeah, you will yeah, be getting yeah, a global please. certificate yeah guys if you have any technical queries or any other queries you can just uh, ping on this chat we can just we are here to help you if z is going guys, to be asked, please yeah yeah Jeet and myself are here. You can just for technical queries. I'll, I'll be answering. Answer and then, yeah, it was said that there would be a quiz towards the end of this webinar. Okay, you want a quiz? Uh, so I think Ashok will be the right person for the quiz part. So right, I quiz, don't think there was a quiz uh, mentioned on this. Because, uh, yeah, there was not. It was not mentioned actually. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I there think was no. Um, there's thing mentioned about the, probably a yeah. miscommunication. No, not an issue. Mm -hmm. So I was just going through the mail. I've uh, found it. There is no certification. Okay. So, okay, there is a certification workshop. Yeah, it's a certification base. So congratulations, guys, whoever is attended and about the certification part. Really apologize for that. You are going to get a certification on this. Okay, that's by Intellipad itself. Thanks for attending the webinar. So just for the confirmation on the certification part, if you can drop a mail probably. Okay, or just drop us a message here so that we can keep a track of you, whoever uh, it is was looking for the certification, but or uh, yeah, rest of the whoever is attending, it's around 28 people right now. Okay, so yeah, and uh, any any other questions, guys? Please you can uh, go ahead, and we are here to solve it for you. Just to confirm, the project set has used has an already been transformed, right? Uh... Yes, it, it has been transformed. Basically, what we have done is here that uh, so basically uh, we have done a project where we have uh, we are having a channels uh, data and one there is one specific company as I've already explained it in the be beginning, right? You see, uh, I mean, so this session is uh, about very limited resources. If you want to know about uh, security stuff and all the thing. So if you once you get enrolled with us, we can just help you out. I mean, there is there is a lot of things to be learned. So this is, today, whatever we have done is just sample file which uh, we have just taught to you. So there are a lot of lot more things if you can do. So basically, there are many cap security capabilities in Azure SQL, and every each database has its own security capabilities. So once you get enrolled with us, we can just uh, I mean you can learn a lot. There are a lot to explore, guys. Trust me, uh, me not only me. There are there are many industrial experts which are working with IntelliPad. You can just enroll with us, and then you can just, all your queries will be uh, resolved by supporting. There is a support team separately which will be 24 hours available, who will be answering. I mean, at what whatever time you can, you just need to raise a ticket, and then your query will be resolved. Whether it will be technical query or a generic query or anything else. So I think uh, Jeet can explain more about this thing. Jeet, are you there? I can and as a matter of fact, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. If they give yeah. me a call directly, that's better. I've mentioned my personal number over there. Yes, you just save yes. this number and drop me a quick message on WhatsApp right away. Or you can personally yes, give me a call. So if you have any doubts with regards to the content yes. or anything, I can help you out with the course in you know, enrollment and all. Gospel is asking, is the MS SQL Management Studio offline application? One could install it on PC. Yes, you have to. If that is a SQL Server Management Studio, something which is installed offline on PC. Uh, for that, you need to install SQL Server as a pre—I mean prerequisite. Uh, so once your SQL Server is installed, then you can use SQL Server Management Studio. For that, 2019 is the latest version. You can go with that. And then, uh, will we get some discount uh, for this? Jit can explain this thing. Um, Jit can answer this thing. Jit, uh, can you please tell that customer um, regarding the discount, whatever he's saying? So once you can call, you can better call yeah. him so that you can have a good conversation. I mean, you can know much more about the course, about this specific course or whatever course you want to learn. Also, guys, you can just go to IntelliPad uh, Academy where our free courses are there. So just have a look at, uh, just search IntelliPad Academy and you can just go th go through the free courses which are, I mean, so that you can just know the quality of the courses which we provide. 
can you please give me a whatsapp number uh, okay. jeet can you please so, say he's asking me whatsapp number so that is yeah that number is there on whatsapp yeah this number is there on whatsapp let me just copy and paste it to you for you again here so i'm there on whatsapp on this number just a minute yeah so there you go yeah so you can just drop me a message over there i am currently online okay i'm 24/7 yeah. available you can also drop me a message so it's not a business number basically it's my personal number so you'll find me anytime it won't go go to a ivr number or something it will directly ring me up so um, yeah guys yeah guys it's his number is 974180410871288 it's already there in messages you can check it danish you will be surely getting a discount just have a conversation with our uh, Course advisor, so Jeet is here to help you. He will definitely uh, give you a good discount. Can I'll give you the best uh, offer since you asked for it. So I think Danish is having a difficulty to check the number here. So Danish, uh, just note it down. I'll be slowly saying the number. Okay. So it's nine seven four one zero eight seven one two eight. So you can see in the webinar itself, in the chat section, if you go, you can find I've mentioned the number over there. All right. Or if you just do one thing, if you can just drop your number over here, I'll drop you a quick message right now. If you are okay with sharing your number, if you have a public number sort of a thing, you can just drop you a quick message. Okay. The workshop certification is going to provide it by us directly. Then you don't have to worry about it. So we'll be reaching you out. My team is going to reach you out. Whoever has attended the webinars, whoever are still there right now. So whoever attended this. So we have a database of those people and we'll definitely reach you guys out and share you the certifications. Probably over the mail we'll share it that you don't have to worry about. It will be taken care of. Yes, Yorka. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So all right, guys. Thank you for attending this session very patiently. Uh, I hope everyone have enjoyed the session and understood it. I mean learned a lot in the, from this session. Thank you guys. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you everyone and thanks a lot Ashok. You've been really helpful. You've explained it really well and I personally have enjoyed the session a lot and uh, of course we'll we'll uh, just com uh, communicate with everyone again, right? Communicate with everyone soon and see you on the webinar on the coming webinars very soon then. All right.